Lucius Quinctius Cincinnatus was a Roman aristocrat and statesman whose service as consul in 460 BC and dictator in 458 BC and 439 BC made him a model of civic virtue. Cincinnatus was regarded by the Romans, especially the aristocratic patrician class, as one of the heroes of early Rome and as a model of Roman virtue and simplicity. He was a persistent opponent of the plebeians. When his son, Caesar Quinctius, was convicted and condemned to death, Cincinnatus was forced to live in humble circumstances, working on his own small farm, until an invasion caused him to be called to serve Rome as dictator, an office which he resigned two weeks later. After completing his task of defeating the rival tribes of the Equines, Sabines, and Volscians, his immediate resignation of his near-absolute authority with the end of the crisis has often been cited as an example of outstanding leadership, service to the greater good, civic virtue, lack of personal ambition, and modesty. As a result, he has inspired a number of organizations and other entities, many of which are named in his honor. Biography Early career politically, Cincinnatus was a persistent opponent of attempts to improve the legal situation of the plebeians. His son, Ciso Quinctius, often drove the tribunes of the plebeians out from the forum, the heart of Roman political life, preventing them from reaching a formal decision. In 461 BC, these actions finally resulted in a capital charge against Ciso. After Ciso was released on bail and escaped to the Etruscans, he was condemned to death in absentia and his father had to pay an immense fine, forcing him to sell most of his lands and retire to a small farm, where he and his family were able to subsist on the work of his hands. The following year, Cincinnatus was elected Suffolk Consul. During his consulship, his main adversary was the plebeian tribune Gaius Terentilius Hussar. During this time period, the Roman Senate was preoccupied with a war against the Volscia, a neighboring Italic people. Cincinnatus was initially able to prevent the enactment of reforms proposed by Terentilius, who attempted to use the upheaval associated with the war effort to push him through. This was a series of reforms which were specifically to benefit the proletarii and peasantry including a proposal to draw up a code of written laws applicable equally to patricians and plebeians, an early push for what would eventually become the Ten or Twelve Tables. Dictator in 458 BC, the Romans were fighting the Equi and the Sabines. The consul Minucius Escalinus had led an army against them, but had been trapped by the Equans in the Alban Hills and was attempting to fight off a siege. A few Roman horsemen escaped and returned to Rome to tell the Senate what had happened. The Senate fell into a panic and authorized the other consul for the year, Horatius Pulvillus, to nominate a dictator. Horatius nominated Cincinnatus for a dictatorial term for six months. A group of senators were sent to tell Cincinnatus that he had been nominated dictator. According to Livy, the senators found Cincinnatus while he was plowing on his farm. Cincinnatus cried out, Is everything all right? They said to Cincinnatus that they hoped it might turn out well for both him and his country, and then they asked him to put on his senatorial toga and hear the mandate of the Senate. He called to his wife, Rassilia, telling her to bring out his toga from their cottage. When he put on his toga, the senatorial delegation hailed him as dictator and told him to come to the city. He then crossed the Tiber River in a boat provided by the Senate, as his farm was on the far side of the river. When he reached the other side of the Tiber, he was greeted by his three sons and most of the senators. Several lictors were given to him for protection. The next morning, Cincinnatus went to the Roman Forum and nominated as his master of the horse Lucius Tarquitius, who was considered one of the finest soldiers in Rome. Cincinnatus then went on to the Roman Popular Assembly and issued an order to the effect that every man of military age should report to the campus, Martius, the Field of Mars god of war, by the end of the day. Once the army assembled, Cincinnatus took them to fight the Equi at the Battle of Monsalgadus. 
Cincinnatus led the infantry in person, while Tarquitius led the cavalry. The Equi were surprised by the double attack and were soon cut to pieces. The commanders of the Equi begged Cincinnatus not to slaughter the Mal. Cincinnatus did not want to cause any unnecessary bloodshed, and told the Equi that he would let them live if they killed three major people for him and brought their leader, Gracchus Cloelius, and his officers to him in chains. A yoke was set up, made up of three spears, and the Equi had to pass under it in an act of submission, bowing down while confessing that they had been conquered. After this, the war ended and Cincinnatus disbanded his army. He then resigned his dictatorship and returned to his farm, a mere 15 days after he had been nominated dictator. Later events he came out of retirement again for a second term as dictator to put down a conspiracy of Spurius Melius, who supposedly was planning to become king. He was nominated by his old friend and relative Titus Quinctius Capitolinus Babatus, consul of the year. Melius was killed immediately when the master of the horse was sent to bring him to trial and the incipient coup paired with him. With the crisis resolved, Cincinnatus again resigned his commission. Within his lifetime Cincinnatus became a legend to the Romans. Twice granted supreme power, he held on to it for not a day longer than absolutely necessary. The high esteem in which he was held by his compatriots is illustrated with an anecdote from the end of his life. One of his sons was tried for military incompetence. The great Capitolinus defended him by asking the jury who would go to tell the aged Cincinnatus the news in the event of a conviction. The son was acquitted because the jury could not bring itself to break the old man's heart. Legacy The towns of Cincinnato, in Lazio, Italy and Cincinnatus, New York and Cincinnati, Ohio in the United States, were named in his honor. George Washington was often compared to Cincinnatus for his willingness to give up his position as commander-in-chief of the Continental Army in decline offers of near monarchical power after the crisis of the American Revolution had passed and victory had been won, instead retiring to his farm at Mount Vernon. The Society of the Cincinnati is a historical association founded in the aftermath of the American Revolutionary War, by officers of the Continental Army, to preserve the ideals of the military officers' role in the new American Republic. Washington was its first president. The city of Cincinnati, Ohio was named in honor of this society.